So it's particularly sinister. Soros promotes every kind of social subversive, subversive organization in the world. It's not just George Soros, but he's probably the most famous example. And he's become a national security threat right now to many countries. They're passing laws against Soros. <laughs> There, there, are, there were mass demonstrations in Macedonia recently against one man. You know, the media always tell you that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. You've probably heard that. You've read it in the Irish Times. They look, liberals love talking about that. Inequality. But they never tell you what the rich people are doing with their money. And what they're doing is they're buying journalists in the Irish Times. To tell you that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer, but you can't do anything about it. Because Soros doesn't really exist, and if he does, he's a philanthropist. So, we all need to be re-educated. You know, nowadays, one is being re-educated every day. I don't know how many times I've had to change my mind on views, you know. So, I think that ultimately, what these people are is the closed society. It's the very opposite of what Soros is pretending to promote. It's a closed society of closed minds. And I think that, you know, what we, what the people want is an open mind, to have an open mind about things. It's, it's good to be open-minded because it makes you humble. You, you realize, wow, I was wrong about that. I've got to change my mind again. I'm going to have to go back and revise that. And that's learning, that's education. It's all about changing your mind and being prepared to change your mind. It can, it, it can be difficult to change your mind about a topic if you have a theory about it, you know. People are reluctant to kind of let go of some idea they have. But then when you see the facts, you've got no choice. And that was my case, you know. So many lies we've been told in this country about the Catholic Church. And you see this all over the world, I mean, in France it's the same. They never tell you about the good things they, they, they do all over the world. You know, when I, when I went to Syria, I, um, I met a nun who was uh, one of the truthers of the war. She was coming out in the media a lot and, you know, she was, uh, she was talking to me about uh, she was in a hospital and one of the rebels was being uh, seen to by the doctors. And half his body had been blown away, but he was laughing. And uh, she said that he was just, you know, on drugs. Out of their mind on drugs. Okay? You know, these people, the media, call peaceful protesters and rebels and so on. These psychopaths. These are the these are their friends. And I've met a lot of religious people in, in these wars. It really changed my mind about the, the, the function, the social function of the church. Because one thing the church has always believed in is truth, and the concept of truth, and the idea that the human mind can know truth. The truth today is a taboo word. You're not supposed to look for truth. In the universities, they promote theories. And anybody who says the truth is a conspiracy theorist. Because theory is the only thing they understand in universities. They have theories about this and theories about that. And it's all critical theory. But they don't look for the truth. The universities, when they were founded, they were founded to promote secular knowledge. The church was so confident in the truth that they wanted to promote science and culture. The universities were, were founded to promote science and culture. Secular knowledge, the search for the truth in each discipline. And that is absent today. There's just no search for the truth whatsoever. So, you know, we, I think we need to talk about a cultural revolution. I think that's kind of what, what's happening through the internet. It's a good thing about the internet, that there has been a cultural revolution, at least in a minority 
uh, of our society. That is to say, people who are waking up, the idea of waking up, um, you know, searching for more information, contacting other people, social media, and so on. That's a really good thing. But, you know, the question of, we, we hear a lot about minority rights. Well, I just hope that there will be those laws protecting minorities will still be in place when Irish people are a minority in Ireland because, uh, you know, I'm hoping I'll get some grants, you know, I'll be protected by the state. Because um, I'm not looking forward to being a minority. I, I do concern, I am concerned about minorities. I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want to hurt them, I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to them. I wouldn't want to be one of them. You know, I live in France, I've been there for about 11 years now. If there were hundreds of thousands of Irish people coming to France and settling there, and the French are starting to kind of say, there's really too many French, I would probably say, or really too many Irish, I would probably say, yeah, you're right. You know, you meet people like that. Polish have always say that to me in Ireland. There's probably too many Poles. I don't think there's too many Poles in particular. But, um, you know, people would say that. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that people can understand the other's point of view. You know, that, that's completely absent today. Like, if I come in and I stay, you know, too long in your house, then I must try and understand that maybe that will make you uncomfortable, maybe you have something to do, you know? But now it's no. If you don't agree with my point of view, you're wrong. And that's the whole approach. And like, like we had this a lot of talk about you know, the other and the importance of difference and so on. But if you homogenize everything, there's going to be no more difference. I mean, if everything becomes this, then there's no more diversity. I mean, the foreigners here are going to get bored if there's no more Irish people. They're, going to, they're, they're probably going to go, you know, what is this? There's no, I keep meeting people in Ireland, foreigners, who say they can't learn English. Because they can't meet Irish people. I mean, we've kind of turned into leprechauns, you know? We'll be at the end of the, you know, the gay pride uh, parade. They're, they're the Irish people. The end of the rainbow. The leprechauns and the pride parade. You know, killing their kids. And having gay marriage and so on. Since when do gays ever want to get married anyway? I just don't understand that. I thought the whole idea of gay culture was a rejection of the idea of marriage, was it not? Because marriage, in most languages, means the union of opposites. That's what marriage is, right? You marry wine with cheese, with cheese. you don't marry cheese with cheese. But marriage is, why would you want to get married if you were gay? I don't understand that. Oh, did I just, did I, did I criticize the homosexual movement? Sorry about that. Um, am I going to be censored now? No I think I'll be assassinated for doing that. You know, just to sum up, because uh, I've probably, probably spoken for an hour already, and I'll, I'll finish up now. Um, things I'm particularly concerned about, closer to home and all over Europe, I guess, um, is the, the safety of our kids. The, you know, I think this is just the most disgusting agenda I've ever seen. If you haven't researched Kinsey, research him. You know, research Kinsey and the so-called sexual revolution. You know, pushing this on children, how, how horrible to do that to a four-year-old, a, a five-year-old kid. You know, they're waiting for Santa Claus, you know. This is the, that's the child's world. They're waiting, they, they believe in tooth fairies, you know. Why, why not allow kids to have their childhood and their innocence? It's a beautiful period in your life. It should be. And you should, children should be able to enjoy play. Because it's the only time in our life when we, you know, watch a child playing. It's, you know, they, the world is a dream for them. And they're taking away the dreams of children. That's what they're doing. A child's world is pure imagination. It's play. 
and they are taking away that innocence. These people are crazy.